All over the world, the importance of any railway network is not in doubt. Countries have over the years relied on rail to deliver goods and services, and in some cases to foster international relationships between states. The same cannot be said of Ghana's railway network. A once vibrant railway system with over 950 kilometers of rail lines crossing the southern part of the country is all but dead. Over the past 20 years, some investment has been made to revive the industry. However, this is but a drop in the ocean if we want to revive our rail industry. The broken down rails, dilapidated trains and rundown stations are all but a shadow of the glory past. Tonight on Talking Point, we ask whether we are committed to reviving our rail network. Are we prepared to put our money where our mouth is? Can we look to the future with a brand new rail system crossing the length and breadth of the country? Or will we continue the pocket change approach to dealing with our rail system? My name is Jyoti Hasman. You can join us on Talking Point today on GBC24, GTV, GBCGhana.com, as well as Unique. 95.7 um, FM. My guest on Talking Point today, on my far left, I'll start with the Honorable Deputy Minister for Railways Development, Mr. Kweku Ajanin Boati. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Next to him is um, Mr. Yao Che, who is a marketing consultant. Um, good evening, sir. Good evening. We are also expecting the join us shortly. So let's talk about the railway and see what the way forward is it is for us. All right, gentlemen, I'll start with the obviously I'll start with the honorable deputy minister for railway development. A quite quite a new ministry created yes. by his excellency the president specifically to ensure that we have the necessary changes to our railway network. Tell us so far what your ministry has been doing before we get into the nitty-gritty of the railway system. Uh, thank, you. You so <coughs> thank you. Um, uh, like you rightly said, um, it's a new ministry. Um, we just, we just barely, we're barely a year old. Um, for starters, what we've, what we've done is to look at the institutional framework. We are looking at the strength of what we have which is the Ghana Railway Company Limited and Ghana Railway Development Authority. These are the two institutions that uh, have been managing the rail sector. The Railway Company Limited is, uh, is one of the, um, I'll say that the, the major stakeholders, in fact, it's the only uh, company that is actually plying the routes. And then we have the Railway Company Lim uh, uh, Railway Development Authority, which is currently acting as both the developer and the, the authority in charge of the sector. Now we have a ministry. It used to be part of um, transport, mm -hmm. but we are now on our own. And um, the fact that the focus, the president's vision and focus is on rail, is testimony to the fact that the president wants to uh, make rail work. He's not only setting up a ministry, but he's actually walking the talk. I mean, for, 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 for last year, I would say 2016 budget, the rail sector got 10 million Ghana cities to look at the sector, which is woefully just, I mean, if you look at the, the, the expenditure of the rail sector, it was just virtually a drop in the ocean. Mm -hmm. 2017, we jumped to in excess of 500 million Ghana cities. That's why I say that the president didn't just set up a ministry, but he was actually, he, he, he worked the talk, he wants rail to work, and he can't, I mean, he keeps emphasizing that he wants the rail to move from Takradi to Paga. So for starters, we've looked at the institutions that are acting in the sector. Uh, the minister is very clear with his strategy. He wants to have um, uh, an independent regulator that is going to look at the sector, and that we're going to have institutions that are going to make the sector work. For instance, owners of infrastructure. It's like you have, we're looking at best practices all over the world. Even in Ghana, we're looking at other sectors such as maritime, uh, Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, Ghana Maritime Authority. Even for utilities, you're looking at PURC and all that. So you have an independent regulator who engender confidence in the sector because rail is quite expensive to construct. The infrastructure is very expensive and uh, you want to have investor confidence. And for that matter, if you have an independent regulator, you can, you can get that kind of confidence from people who are coming to put in money in the sector. So we are looking at the institutions, we are strengthening what we have. So for instance, Ghana Railway Company Limited is going through a lot of uh, changes in terms of organogram, 
we are looking at rehabilitation of uh, a lot of the lines. Uh, recently, you realize that the surround line is, a current surround line is stopped, stopped working. We are looking at uh, rehab, rehabbing the lines. We are looking at, uh, the currently, the, the one on the table is the accident that just occurred at the, just close by the Achimota station, and we are looking at um, rehabilitating the lines as well, because these lines are quite old. I mean, you and I were agree. You started by saying that the, the sector is dead. <laughs> I mean, for... Well, it's limping, to be honest Well, you. well, I would say uh, that... Um, it's, it's, it's been quite resilient. It's, it's survived all the neglect. And uh, we are looking at bringing the sector back to life. I, I, would, I would go to the extent of saying that we neglected the sector. It's not working the way it should. And um, now that we're getting investment, I mean, for, for a long time, the sector couldn't rehabilitate itself. And you know, infrastructure, transport infrastructure, you need to keep on doing the re rehabilitation works. Just like what we do to our roads, we do airport expansions, we do, we do road expansions, we do uh, 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 what do you call uh, port expansions. Look at what, what we are doing at the Tama port. If we did a quarter of what we've done in other sectors, in the rail sector, we wouldn't have the situation we have so, now. So from your ministry's point of view, we didn't put money in the rails, so this is where we are. However, some have said that the Railway Development Authority and the Railway Corporation have not themselves been up and doing when it comes to rail. They have just tagged along. Is that the case? Is that why you are trying to change these uh, organizations? Yeah, we're, not going to, we're not going to just change them. We're, we're trying to give them more, more I'll say that we, we're putting some energy into them. We, 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 we're putting them on the spot. We want to make them work. They haven't just tagged along. I mean, if you look at the, the extent of neglect, if you look, if you evaluate the extent of neglect, you understand that you can't operate without resources. You can't be relevant in these changing situations. I mean, technology has caught up with our systems. All our networks, apart from just well, a few of the lines, are still operating on narrow gauge. The world has since moved on. Mm -hmm. We're looking at narrow gauges about just three feet six. Yeah. We've, we've moved on to standard gauges, four feet eight. We are still on the same gauge. The rolling stock we have to have, I mean, it's not what we have now. When I got to the accident scene recently, I, I just near that Achimota station, the, the situation is, is the, I mean, you can't, you're looking at timber, I mean, timber slippers. That is it's so, it's, it, it wasn't even treated. You took, you're talking about lines that are over 100 years old. The first lines were constructed somewhere in 1898. We haven't gone back to them. We've done various rehabilitation works, but then the real catching up with the world is not what we have now. But did we so, not, did we not, honor, honorable minister, did we not think about these things? For example, when President Kufo decided to do the Accra uh, uh, Tema line, rehabilitated before President Mahama finished it, did we not think about the fact that when we are buying these brand new coaches, we are going to be using the same lines that we had. Some money was spent on rehabilitating those lines, but now you're, you're here today complaining of the fact that they weren't treated and all of this. Are we not? I doing mean, it's just like asking me today that are we going to go electric or we are going to go diesel? You see, it's it's a question of how much you want to put in the sector. Mm. You can you can do standard gauge, which is also modern, and go diesel. Mm. The others were arguing that the world has gone. Beyond diesel, yeah. So you look at the, the quantum of investment. Rail is expensive all over the world. For the services that, I mean, the benefits you get from rail, you, 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 you would have to put in so much. And sometimes you, the private sector alone, I mean, we, we keep talking about partnering the private sector and all that. There are certain lines that you, you, you have, government must spend because the lines become viable, financially viable, after the lines have been constructed. Right. For instance, we have uh, the Kumasi to Paga line which is a totally virgin line, it's totally new. If you want to put lines on this alignment, which has been uh, envisioned by the, uh, the, 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 net, the, the real network plan, what we call the master the plan, master. Mm -hmm. somebody will tell you that it's not financially feasible because we don't have mineral deposits al along that route. But we also know, as a country, that that's, that's our bread basket. Right. Between Kumasi and Paga, you're going to go through Bonga Half and all that. The question is whether you want to put money where, 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 where it's going to produce the results. So in most countries, the government's for the bill. We are looking at partnering the private sector to help us implement this, this real, real network. 
And I said earlier that for the first time, government is putting a lot of money in the sector, mm -hmm. even though it's not up to what we... we but we, for you to jump from $10 million, $10 million Ghana cities to $500 million in excess of... It tells you that the president is ready to walk the talk. If you look at the, the rehab that you talked about, at the time, we had to stick to the narrow gauge. So the, 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 the rolling stock that came, it's a narrow gauge rolling stock. But now we want to go beyond that. I mean, if you go on the, I mean, the rehabilitation works you talked about, done by Amandi, Tamasa uh, to, to it's, it's, it's good. I mean, nothing has happened since. But then that is not what we are looking at. We are looking at a more, a more developed system that ties in with other, 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 other uh, 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 practices all over the world. All right. So we'll, we'll come to the, the, to the cracks of uh, all of this. Uh, let, let me introduce Yao Che here, who is a marketing consultant. Yao. You've done some work on the on the railway, and um, what is your what is your take on the current situation and what we need to do as a as a country? Well, I mean, um, my old friend here. <laughs> <laughs> what we were saying, uh, you know, we haven't done much. We really haven't done much, and I, I would say this because I try to travel a lot, and every time I go out, I try to use the rail. Mm. I mean, I lived in the U.S. for a while, and this was way back 10 years ago. And you could travel from Boston to... One state to another. Yes, to D.C., you know, eight hours, and then go to work and come back. You know, and, and I feel that um, tying the rail into our economic development is great. I mean, I was reading about our one factory... One district, one. One district, one factory, you know, one district, one warehouse. And I'm thinking, this is great, Mr. President, but you know what, if you have... I am just thinking high-speed rail. If you have high-speed rail system, you know, you're tying it into the towns that you, you're going to have your, these factories at, the towns that you're going to have these warehouses at, you know, Accra is not going to be congested because somebody can work in, uh, let's just say, Kumasi and lives in Accra, and if it's two hours, right, wouldn't they go? Typical example, quite recently, like a month ago, I went to China and I had to go to a place where 1998, when I went, it took me 40 hours on the train to get there. This time, it took me six hours. And the train was doing 305 kilometers mm -hmm. per hour. I mean, I was telling my friend, I said, I preferred this train to the plane because my flight to that place the last time was bumpy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was smooth. Everybody, you know, people had their laptops, their you know, iPads, reading their newspapers, people had to work, were working. You know, so it, it, it brings development and it brings less congestion on the street. Because, I mean, if you look at Ghana, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking as a marketing consultant, I have um, um, a partner who's um, an investor who wants to invest in a real, Dr. Thomas Mensa, he's like a world mm -hmm. um, expert in um, infrastructure. Um, on my way to work every day, I hear, you know, FM's talking about trotros and, you know, the buses and all of these things. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, just between Accra and Tamilon, if you put a high-speed rail there, you know, how many people are going to join it? Because, I mean, like the way my honorable minister has dressed, do you think he wants to go into a trotro? But you go into a rail, which is 30 minutes, you know, charging more money than the trotro, safer, and it gets you there. And then, you know, apart from all of that, we are looking at, you know, doing um, this buffer stock. We, yeah. The government is looking at doing a lot of development, you know, trying to get factories, warehouses, buffer stocks, all of those things. We need to link these things. How are we going to link it? I mean, our roads are not, I mean, I'm going to give it great C. You know, if you travel from Accra to Tamale, you know, it's, it's not as good. Roads are small. You know, our, our trucks that travel with these things are too big. Why don't we divert these things on the rail? You know, so I mean, yes, if the president has um, invested 500, was it 500 million? No, that's it's great. Yeah. But we need, we need, honestly, we need private sector investment. We need foreign investors who are ready. But they also want to see that this vision will be carried on. Like you're saying, I mean, we do little things, little things. So uh, an investor looking at Ghana 15 years ago has heard that. You know, we've said these things, but nothing has happened. Do you think they want to put their money in? Mm. No. So mm. that's interesting. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean um, 
Honorable Ajini Mbwati, this master plan you talked about, uh, the real master plan, a huge document. I've read, I've read most of it, <laughs> about 300 and something pages of it. Um, the worry for me with that particular doc document is that it doesn't deal with other forms of real infrastructure that I personally think we should. For example, intercity trams, which is a, it's, it's cheaper to have than to have your normal ra rail. Underground, uh, these are not captured in, in this five year. And that surprised me. It looks to <coughs> us that we are just concentrating on uh, <laughs> the, 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 the the old form of things. That, 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 that. Yeah, um, uh, I'll say that the, the 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 objective of the master plan was what the, the, the I mean, you, you can't they, they dealt with the the Riley said the old alignment, mm -hmm. but they had a clear objective to, to to achieve. So they achieved the objective. This was done in 2013. Mm -hmm. We are looking at other sectors in the real industry. So but you call it a master plan. Yes. So a master plan must incorporate every other sector so that we can see which one works for us yeah you but see you see we, 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 it's real real I, I call it an industry because it's not even it is a, an industry that's true you, you can you can look at so many sectors we are looking at the the i mean just if you go if you check the newspapers tomorrow you realize that we've, we've issued expressions of interest for the the light metro lines right the fact that it's not captured in the master plan doesn't mean that it's not something we are not going to do because at the time 2013 when the master plan was, was, was completed, it was looking at how to revamp, the, give us a new alignment, give us a new sector, I mean, give, take the railway, redo it. They looked at the old alignment, they came up with a new alignment between Kumasi and Paga. We are not just looking at the, the alignment per se, we are looking at associated infrastructure. So you're looking at from rails to cities, you're looking at it. I mean, rail comes with a lot of associated projects. That that uh, 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 you, you can get a lot of employment from it. You can get a lot. So so what, what, for instance, in today's world, when you arrive at a terminal, it's a destination. It is. You can do anything there. There are restaurants. There are hotels. There are estates around it, and all that. So the master plan give us a direction. It's an excellent document by, by an Italian consortium, Team Engineering. Yeah. We are looking to review it. Now we are looking at even realigning some of the places that they, they, they positioned the, between Kumasi and uh, Paga. Paga. We're trying to, so a lot is going on within the, it's a document that forms the basis of our, our, our various... So uh, it's not the all in all. It's not the all in all. We're going to look at it and, I mean, it, you see, the real is, it's, it's life. In the past, people tell you they come from Dadieso. This, all these communities got their names from the real lines. The real lines, true. So real is life. When I, when, when I, I, we had a public hearing at the Achimoto station last week, just last week, and you'd be surprised how people related to the, the lines. The lines, for them, is life. The market women from uh, Santana Market coming to tell me, look, they, they, they travel the routes, they walk the routes. It's, it's, they even determine time. With the, with the, when, when the trains get there, they know what time it is in their homes. But they, they've lived with, with the lines for a long time. Older generations will tell you they, they used to be sleeper trains. Yes, I remember. Sleep. I took the sleeper once uh, uh, on my so, way to Kumasi. Good. So, so you, you can understand how rail affected the country, affected people. At the point in time, around the 1923s, the, the Gold Coast became the richest colony because of the rails. People were transporting cocoa through the rail. I mean, they never had to carry it on their heads anymore. So rail is life, and we want to bring it back. Now, if you look at today's life, urban life, People wake up like 4 a.m. Kids have to, to grapple with life in such a way that to get from Adenta to maybe across the ministries, if you work there, you have to wake up like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. with the kids in, 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 the, in the taxis, there are private cars and all that. When they leave school, they have to go back to the offices, hang around, get home like 10 a.m. That is not life. We're looking at urban, urban lines. You talked about underground. I don't think we're looking at underground now. We're looking at these trams. I mean, trams, trams are quite expensive. Light rail expensive. We are looking at the metro lines. You have to always look at what is affordable, what you can do. So these are the options we have, and we have to work at it. But you see, when rail used to be part of the Ministry of Transport, the, the minister had to deal with the ports, aviation, and all that. Now we are focused on rail. The president has been clear. He says, look, go and sit on Railways. We have three ministers, the minister and two deputies. You don't have any other option. You have to make sure the lines work. So we are, we are making sure that we put in place all the regulatory institutions that can help. For instance, an independent regulator will help us. Compliance issues, 
what, 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 what is happening with uh, all the things that you have to... For instance, if you look at what happened with the accident, uh, accident at, Ch at, Ch at, Ch at Ch Motor Station, the first question you ask yourself, has somebody been working on the lines? What is happening to, 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 to the culture of maintenance? maintenance? What is happening there? There's no regulator. Nobody's checking it. So the regulator, as we have now, is also the developer. That is why we have GRD, Ghana Railway Development. So how do you put the regulator and the, 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 the developer together? How you going, you have to separate them and make sure that the regulator is independent. If you want people to invest in the lines as operators, at the moment we have just one operator, Ghana Railway Company Limited, 100% owned by government, only, only, only operator on the lines. We are looking at more operators coming in to, to play the routes. The act has to be repealed. The minister is bent on repealing the, the, the act, 779. We come with a new act that is going to address all the, the situations that we are, we are dealing with. Okay. So I will say that it's, it's, it's not, it's not uh, the challenges are surmountable. It's not a basket case. It's not, it, we, we are looking at it. We can do it. It's something we can do. The private sector is very welcome. When you compare our, our situation with other countries, we left it to die and we slept over it. If I've looked at Japan, I've looked at the Japanese model and all that, they, they got their line just around the same time we got ours. But we left ours to die. So we have to just revive it, make sure. And it's not by, I, I keep saying this. That like many things else. Like like many, many, yeah. many, many, I mean, many other things. If you look at the, 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 the contribution that real plays in countries like India, which, which is the largest employer of any in, in, in India, in the world is just next to the Russian army. Yeah. It employs so many people, it's unbelievable. We can, it's, 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 a, it's a sector that we, if we look at it carefully, you can employ so many people. You can create a lot of estates around the terminals. You can create businesses. So it's, the real culture mustn't die. If you, if you go to Kodukrum today and you see people waiting for the rail to go to, it's, it's, it's very encouraging. And for us, it's, it, it means that if we work on the other lines, for instance, at the moment we're doing Tamatua Kosombo, has it started? It started. 84 kilometers of rail. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure that if you get to Akosombo, you can put water transport on, on almost to Bupe. And then you can do all these uh, uh, journeys to, you get an inland port, you get the journeys to uh, uh, Burkina Faso and all the landlocked countries. So water is very cheap to travel by. So you, you get a ferry, a freight ferry on it, you can travel. So rail can change things. It's going to change things given the way we're going. And um, the private sector is very welcome to act in it. And then we want to make sure that they come in in a way that they have the confidence. And they have, I mean, if you're looking at the Kenya example, the Ethiopian example, and all that, we're looking at all these studies. We've been talking about the Ghana railway sector and how it can be revamped. Yeah, you talked about investment. What sort of investment are we looking at, really? What well, sort of money <laughs> are we throwing around? Well, I mean, like the Honorable Minister said, it, it involves a lot. I mean, I like the way he said, railway is our life. It really is our life. I mean, I'm, I'm casting my mind back to, like, in the 70s, you know, every movie that we had, the Kwanzaa movies, we had kids chasing the railway. You know, it was, yeah. it was something that, you know, my father used to say, look, he moved from Accra to Tema to, I think, at the top of the town, I forgot the name of the um, place, at 12 o'clock just to have yeah. fun and come yeah. back to work. Yeah. You know, it was, it was part of people. Um, with regards to investment, obviously, I mean, all over the world, um, in places like third world countries, the government cannot fund anything. I mean, if you go to places like the U.S., of course, we have the states that can fund it. And, of course, if you go to China, and I'm referring to China because right now they are, like, really big in terms of technology. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's amazing. I mean, it's the government can fund it. We necessarily, as Ghana, we, don't, we might not have all the money to fund. I mean, if we really want to put a good railway system, we're looking at 500 to a million, um, 500 to a billion dollar investment. You know, I mean, the people that I'm working with, if we are thinking of stuff like 500 to a billion dollar, just investment, just for maybe somewhere between maybe Accra and Kumasi. So it's a lot of money. Um, but like I, I say again, it has to be attractive. I mean, you know, from what our honorable minister. But the point is, mm -hmm. is it attractive for a nation such as ours? Mm -hmm. Is real attractive? Was we wouldn't leave it to die. Technically, it should be. Is it attractive to an investor right now? 
maybe now after you know the institution of the ministry because we we we've looked at this for about five years but then when the ministry came up we said okay there's been some kind of seriousness because the government has dedicated some time to a ministry to develop this so we said why not let's jump on it so as we speak now I, you know every investor is looking at jumping in fast so that you know there'll be a pay setter so yes now it's a, 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 i think it's a bit you think it's viable it's certainly viable if we set our mind to it um two years ago absolutely not i wouldn't be say, i wouldn't even take your call for talking <laughs> about railway but yes now it is viable it's 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 something that we should do we are entering the 21st century i mean you can't depend on just roads yeah. and you know and, and i make comparison to the u.s because i lived there for a while i mean in the u.s you have at 95 from uh, Vermont all the way to Florida, north to south. Nice roads, and yet they still have a railway that links you all the way from Vermont to Florida. So you have that option. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to even talk about subways, you know, because in the U.S. you only have it in places like New York and other places. But then the railway really helps, you know. I mean, talk about China. The railway has made the the. Uh, um, uh, it made China one of the best in terms of technology. I mean, export. The, the difference between China mm -hmm. and, uh, and Ghana, for, for that matter, is I mean, when China says, uh, and I know it's about money, but China just helped Kenya uh, to develop the Mombasa to Nairobi right. uh, uh, line, mm -hmm. uh, which cost them some three point something billion. Mm -hmm. However, China also has interests, so therefore they will put their money there. Mm -hmm. It is up to us to decide whether. We want it badly enough. Because I'm, I'm getting worried, uh, Honorable Minister, that at the end of the four years, we will still be talking about developing the railway in the, in the way that you are. Yes, um, I want to address your earlier concern that uh, do we need it or is, is it, do we need it badly? We do. We know all, all the crises that you see around our transport infrastructure, it's because the rail is missing. It's the only missing link to complement the other transport uh, systems that we have. I mean, sea, air, and then the road. Can you imagine the kind of freight we have to take from Burkina Faso entering Ghana all the way to the port right. in, in Tema? It is from the topmost part of the country to the tip. I mean, the, the southernmost part of the country. Do we have to do this? I mean, we have mineral deposits littered all over the place. If you get to Sheni, you have iron ore, you get to parts of the western line, you have bauxite, manganese, and all. We, are not even ex we can't even think about exploiting all this because we don't have the means of transporting them. But we have accidents yeah. on our roads, killing, I mean, the, if, you, if you check the, 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 the road traffic uh, statistics, traffic. and a third of our accidents are on, because every, Think of anything you want to carry around the country. You have to go by road. But here's a the country where on the roads. Yes, honourable minister. Here's a country where we came up with a brilliant idea called Buankra Inland Port, for example. We put up a structure, and the structure still sits there for many, many years because of the absence of the rail. Why? Buankra is not a rail concept. It's a shippers council concept. You see, people misconstrue this. Buankra doesn't belong to Ghana Rail. Was it not supposed mm. to have a rail from, from Kuma to, see, ba to Buankra? So we are still talking about investment. If you put up the structure before the line, the line is supposed to serve. The, you, you see, we, all, we are always wise after the event. Right. We put, on, we put in all the infrastructure that is supposed to be the inland port, but what is going to make it relevant wasn't there. Mm. So Buankra doesn't belong to the, the, the rail sector. It is a shipless authority mm -hmm. project. So it is now that we're going to put the lines in there. So we should have, we should know what to do first. These are priorities. So people saw the opportunity. They knew that if you had, if you had an inland port, it's going to be very viable. It's going to be financially viable and all that. So they put the, but they forgot that the, the lines must be present to make it useful, to make it germane to all the right. industry uh, settings. You have to put the lines there. Without real, and with the current urbanization processes. I mean, look at the number of people trooping into the urban areas and the kind of activities that we're having. I mean, we're talking about a, a one district, yeah. uh, one factory, one... I mean, you need rail. Rail, first of all, is cheap. Mm -hmm. It's cheap to travel on rail. It's mass transportation. All the cars you, that drive into the city center every day, okay. you're driving behind a 17 plate, 
breaks just in front of you when the traffic light goes green. And you start screaming, what the hell is going on? You forget that that car is nine years abroad and has just got to Ghana, but the plate is 17. So you think it's a new car, but that car is old. All the people moving into the CBD, the Central Business District, yeah are coming in because they want to work. You want to just quickly rush down. It's just like living in London. You want to move from one station to maybe go, go to Oxford Street to get something. You jump on the central line. Yes. You go in the five, six stops, you're back. In a car, you have to drive or get jump onto the truck or get a taxi. And they're all in the traffic. It, it drizzles for about 10 minutes in a car and you can't even move. You can't move. It's affecting life. A CEO told me that he can't have two meetings a day in a car. If he has to move from his office to any other location to have a meeting, he can just do one. And it's, it's affecting business, it's affecting productivity. People who produce farm, farm produce, in where I come from, Bekum, in my village in Jini, you can't, I mean, how are you going to bring all this produce to town? You drive along the route, buy things, cheap from farmers. You're affecting them, you're affecting their lives. It doesn't make farming even attractive. Because you, you get a whole, you see people driving in SUVs, big cars, bargaining uh, uh, TVs of yard for cheap, cheap money because the farmer has to go back home with the, with the, with the, with the produce. Oh, before the produce so gets please, absent. real is so important, you can't even talk about, you can't even talk about its absence. But can, so we, we, can we have it at least started before this? I, 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 I wouldn't want to subject real to political cycles. You see, infrastructure. But that's the problem because nobody seems to have the will to set it in motion. We do it in bits and bobs. Because, because we, we don't see, want to see, set it in motion. We are fortunate for the first time, for the first time ever, since rail came into Ghana in 1898, there is a whole ministry set up for rail. You know, it used to be the most, in, in, before, before independence, it was part of the civil service structure. Yeah. And I'm told that the governor, when he was leaving Ghana, handed over to the, the boss of the railway sector. Because that was the only formalized, organized civil service arrangement he had. Now it's, it's a pale shadow of itself. I mean, railway workers left. I mean, when we, we're doing an inventory of railway, railway uh, assets, and I can believe you me, that assets alone, the balance sheet alone, can be a basis for attracting investment. But most because of them sold off. Sold off, uh, encroachments, and all that. I'll give you an example of what is going on between Tema and Akosombo. When we did our, our site surveys and trying to look at uh, the kind of encroachment, level of encroachment, if we have to go by the reservation that was left, 100 feet mm -hmm. either side. Mm -hmm. We have to break down over 781 structures just to get our way. But we have to compromise because we left it to die. People have encroached. TDC is saying, well, we never give them the permits. The, the, the people are saying we also got our permits from TDC. There's a lot of back and forth. So the ministry is trying to harmonize all these issues and make sure that we have to. We must work. We can't. It's the only missing link. We don't have it. Joe, it's not by accident that all serious developed countries have real working. Today in, 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 in the Netherlands, they're talking about real that, you know, they have something they call a predict and prevent. Right. You, you, there's an app that you, you, you sit in, you, you have it on your phone and everywhere, you know where the, when the, rail, the, the train is getting there, if there's a problem, if there's going to be delays and all that. There's an algorithm that is working on, on these apps. Real is the future. It is, it is going to help industry. The new industrial revolution the president is talking about is going to be hinged on rail. That I can go to my constituency. I have to drive. Look, if I have to get to my constituency, I have to drive like seven hours. And when I get to Kumasi, between Kumasi all through uh, 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 what, uh, the Senate Flats, uh, uh, Suebo and all that, can you imagine the traffic? traffic? I could get there in three hours on a speed train and come back. People don't have to even live in Accra anymore. If you have speed trains, you can move from uh, Abri, come to work in Accra, Kofuidua. We are crowding the center because the transportation systems are not working. And rail is the future. Believe you me. All right. Yeah. Yes. What do you think is the way forward in all of this? So you've talked about partnership. We've talked about investment. But we need to put our money where our mouth is. The talking must stop. And we need to act. Well, I mean... Uh, when I was talking, you, you mentioned whether the Chinese would be interested. Um, from what I know, they're working on the 19, what is it, the 19 point something billion dollar loan. Yeah. And this is targeted towards bauxite, right? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely going to be in their interest to put, the worst would be a high-speed train from 
Tema, which is where they're going to ship it, to maybe the western area, which is where they're going to get most of the bauxite. You know, you're talking about Kenya, you know, and then in, um, apart from Kenya, it's only Morocco and I think Ethiopia that has high speed train in, in, in Africa. And these investors, they know what they're getting. I mean, if you're investing 19 point, God knows how much billion, and fixing the high speed um, railway. Well, but the 19 billion is, the, the 19 billion is really for different things. It's not specifically yeah, for the Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean. What they are getting back in right. return. What they're getting back, yeah. Boxer. Because, yeah, they're going to get a lot of boxes back in return. And, I mean, don't they want to get it faster? Here's my point. Because how are they going to move the book site? By our roads, which, you know, I mean, according to, you don't, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that half of the cars that move from wherever break down before they get to the port. So, and I mean, I schooled in China, I know Chinese. If a Chinese man is giving you their money, they really want a bag for their money. So it will be in their interest. Uh, and I think that, you know, I'm not in government, but I think that um, the Honorable Minister um, would be talking to the people to say, look, we, n we need to have these people invest in real. Because after the contract is expired, the real can't go anywhere. It mm. becomes ours, right? Okay. But then it would help, you know, Lincoln, apart from the mineral areas. My, my concern is not necessarily the mineral areas. It's, in, it's important. My concern is Lincoln the urban areas to remote areas. To remote areas. So okay. you don't have, because honestly, it's, it's when, if you go to Accra and I see you say, I don't, I can't go to Accra. You know, <laughs> I just, I have a driver driving me, but I, I get upset before I get there because it's terrible. All right, let me, let me bring our viewers in, some uh, okay. phone calls coming in, uh, 0260. Nine six nine one six zero zero two six zero nine six nine one six zero. You can call if you've taken the rail or you have a concern as well. You can do that. Honorable Minister, first of all, many people want to know whether you have received that five hundred million. Yes, we do. We do. I mean, I, I talked earlier about the rehabilitation work being done. done. Thought, I have Richard the from our chairman. Good, good evening, Richard. Good evening, Richard. Good evening, Richard. Hello, good evening. Yes, what's your concern? Good evening. Uh, good evening, sir. Let me turn down my... My concern... My concern is that... I'm happy about these discussions. The uh, deputy minister said that since they come to power, they haven't seen any, uh, any development in the railway uh, system infrastructure. Besides that, is he trying to lecture the means? That this is what we're supposed to do, or we are not doing it. Uh, after the railway, what you all know that in the global stand, because I attended school at Tindy, my, my father worked at a uh, location at Katan, and we know how the system works. When we are on holidays, we take uh, Takaradi to Kumanse to Accra. We, you've made your we point. Start. Thank you, Richard. Uh, when we are, we are after our okay, you've made we your know. point. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Let, let me yeah. let me say that I'll give you this document yeah. so that you know that these are expressions of interest that I mean after considering all the uh, interest that we've had, someone solicited, someone solicited, some we consulted them and all that. We, at least for the light rail, so you know what is happening. Right. This has gone out. We're expecting uh, interested parties to come, and then we start the work. This is for the transit um, light rail. Right. This is for the western line. Okay. This is for the Kumasi to Paga, which is what we call the central spine. And so then these are being published? It's published. I mean, right. so you know that something is being done. Okay. I mean, I want us to have, I mean, the person, the, the, the one of this, uh, the, the, on your online, yeah. they, they wanted to know what is being done. You see, you, you have to talk to all the stakeholders, consider, all, do all the consultations before you come out. Direction is more important than speed. People are running to nowhere. You can go speed to nowhere. We want to get it right. Getting it right is very, very important. Now, you talked about um, the money. Well, we will receive it. Look, for the first time, we're doing our own rehabilitation works. Okay. Mind you, if you take the Western Line, I'll have to we, are doing, from, from we, are doing, we are doing rehabilitation on the Western Line. We're doing the same on the Eastern Line. We are not asking for, for money from anywhere to do all this rehabilitation. All we have the budget. Have the and then with all these expressions of interest, if you read them, we're saying that with the money from GOG, mm -hmm. 
we are calling for this uh, expressions of interest. So we own the document. All right. Let, let me take yeah. Mustafa. We'll come back to you. Mustafa, uh, good evening. And what's your concern? Yeah, good evening. After the minister, I wouldn't want the minister to recognize the past presence from the chairman to Akosobo. And second, I want him to tell us actually what are the next line of uh, cases they are going to 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 to, to inspect from the uh, Akutumbu to Northern Sector. Okay. Uh, okay. But, uh, they are telling us what where are they going to get for, for that project. Thank you. All right. Okay. He's talking about the Temato line. He wants to know after Kosumu, where the line is going to go towards the northern sector. I think you already mentioned yeah, that. Yeah. Very the, the, it, it connects to Bupe. Bupe. The Tema Akosumu line, which has actually been extended 10 kilometers more to a place called Mpakadan, mm -hmm. which is across the river, it's, it's, it's a multimodal system of transportation. So we are looking at the rail and the water transport system. So we're going to get to, uh, across the, get an inland port over the river, across the river, and then you connect directly to Bupe. Bupe is, is on, on your way up way north. Up, yeah. So that the goods coming from Paga, you can get an inland port, and then you can just travel by the water transport. That's a multimodal. And I also want to correct the impression that, look, if you connect your rail systems to the mineral deposit, it's not wrong. These are off-takes. Right. You don't have the money to say that, look, I'm spending on, on rail. Every investor will want to look at how I'm going to recoup my money and what is my interest. Some are more interested in the minerals than the way the lines themselves. So these are optics. Even in the colonial era, if you look at our golden triangle, what we used to call the golden triangle, it is constructed around the mineral deposits. Yeah. They were supposed to connect along, because real travel is cheap. People traveling on the Accra, in Sarum and Accra, they pay one city. And you're spending close to, close to $2 million, $3 million per kilometer. $4 million, $5 million in some cases, mm -hmm. depending on the terrain, geomorphology, right. the, the geology and all that. So real, real construction is expensive, very, very expensive. If you don't tie them to where your mineral deposits are, you're not going to get people to show interest. Okay. So, I mean, the guy who said that that is where the failure starts, it's not true. Okay. All over the world, you need to tie in freight and passenger, passenger. so that freight compensates for the, for the lack of... Uh, uh, the, the, it's not like sitting in a taxi and say, I've hired a cabbie to some place and you pay, or the cabbie charges you what he likes. No. All right, let me, let me take my final call and I'll come back to you. Um, Chief from Tamale, good evening. What's your concern? Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes. I, 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 I followed the discussion and I want to appeal to my fellow Ghanaians that... Uh, there are certain projects this government has promised to do, and they are very, very difficult areas. They need lots and lots and lots of money. And these type of projects, you do not think you can do it overnight. So I think we, once we realize that uh, Ghana needs a railway system, I think we should be patient. I, 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 less than a year, I don't think anybody, any government wanting to revamp the railway system cannot make any impact within a year. I think we should be patient and, and, and encourage the system to get a rail system in the country. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Well, wow, wonderful. So I'll take your final comments, but uh, just to say, just to add to what the, the master plan says that we shall complete within about 33 years. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we are going to follow the uh, master plan uh, uh, and start on time and do what the, the, the master plan has phases. Yes. So Six phases. Yes, six phases. Good. We are looking at phase two. Mm -hmm. I realize you're very versed to the master right. plan. I mean, we're looking at phase two. I'm interested in rail. So yes, so we're looking at about maybe 1,400 kilometers of rail, I mean, totally. But now we're looking at 947 kilometers yeah. for, the, for the phase two. So... Before 30, I mean, it's 30, we're going to keep reviewing. Yes. So for instance, now we're looking at aligning towards other areas. We're looking at where the activities are. And also, we, we, where opens up other communities, where becomes a, a, a kind of magnet for activities. So when you have the rail line in a, a certain community where the community was virtually dead, you it have, opens up. It, it, opens up. up yeah. it affects cost of land and all that. I mean, land becomes naturally, I mean, you, you, you get the prices and the values change. Now, we have to address encroachment and our attitude to public assets. Somebody mentioned how we're cutting off our rail lines, selling them and all that. We have so many reports that we are, we are, we are working with, we're working with the police to make sure that all these things cease. But because the sector was neglected, all the compliance issues, the vigilance and all that also left it. So the assets are very good. 
they're well located. If we want to work seriously at it, we can do it. I don't believe for a moment that will cannot be revamped. Okay. We my, can. My producer tells me that my, uh, my time is up. So I'm just going to give you 30 seconds, just 30 seconds to make a final submission. And if it's possible to tell us or give us some timelines as to when we will begin to see uh, action being done. So, so, so these expressions of interest yeah. for the various lines that I just gave you, for the western, the eastern, the, the metro lines in Accra, yeah. and then the, uh, the central spine, which is quasi to Paga, have timelines, no more than two weeks, to submit your proposals. Okay. When we get the proposals, we enter into feasibility, pre-feasibility, feasibility, and then we just go on to award the contracts. All that right. is one. And we, I also want to talk, Daniel, that this is a sector that we must all be interested in and not subject it to political cycles. We must have continuity in, in the kind of infrastructure. Look, this government is paying debts on uh, contracts that were issued before the government came. We are working with a, 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 sec, a, a master plan that was completed in 2013. Well, like the so we're going to do it. So, 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 so please. Up. Yeah, I'll give you the last. <laughs> so <laughs> let's, let's have the I'll give you the last. Let's, let's, let's work with it. I'm up. very confident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a businessman, <laughs> but he knows that we're working hard at it. I'm going to give you the last. last, last, last so, so, I mean, here's, here's what I say. Rail itself, I think it started with coal mining, right? You know, so yeah. the, the freight part is good because those days, way 1800, the only people who used rail were the people who were doing coal mining. The miners. Yeah. Exactly. So freight is, is great, but I also want to see it linked to the urban roads, you know, make it easier for people and all that. One thing I want to say is that, you know, my people that I'm working with, they're thinking of running fiber optics line across all the railway because yeah. he's, he's the inventor of fiber optics. So all of these things can help. I mean, you want to work. You can work sitting on the railway while right. you're going to work. Yeah. So, I mean, 33, yes, yes. My I'm sure by that time we're flying the sky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gentlemen, thank you very it's much. Not, it's uh, not going to be 34, oh, but you know. the Honorable Ajin Imbuatin, Deputy Minister for Railway Development, and Mr. Yao Che, who is a marketing consultant, and hopefully uh, one of the people who will, will make sure that we have high speed reels in this country. So there you have it. The discussion will continue. Um, join us again next week on Talking Point for another interesting discussion. Uh, Ghana is for all of us. We all have to put our hands to the wheel to make it work. My name is J.O. Tiajuman and this is Talking Point.